Hey, what's up everyone? Mr. Andrew here. <laughs> I need to catch my breath. <laughs> I am so sorry I was late. I have three fears in life. Number one, sharks. Let's be honest, everyone is secretly afraid of sharks. Would you want to bump into one in the ocean? I thought not. Number two, heights. If God intended me to be able to reach the top shelf at a grocery store, he would not provide me with the ladder. Instead, I believe he would have just made me taller. And yes, lastly, number three, June bugs. They always are trying to just give you a hug. I get enough hugs from my mother already. Thank you very much. I don't need any more. Anyways, today, today of all days by the front door was a June bug. It's not even June. I don't get it. But I made it through the window. I am here and I'm so excited because we are in our brand new series. Drum roll, please. Proverbs and Last week, Miss Amber really helped us understand what this whole book is all about and how we need to guard our hearts. If you missed that message, stop what you're doing right now and go check it out on our YouTube channel at 1132kids. There you can find past messages, past series, you can find illustrations, epic stories, and some super funny and gross challenge videos. So make sure you go and check those out. All right, so have you guys ever had this happen to you before? You go outside to swim and you're just scared that the pool is too cold. So you know what you do? You walk over, you dip your toe in to check. Well, then you go in and you check a little more. You get a little used to that. You get your knee in there. And then before you know it, you're in the pool. But then guess what? It's too cold. So anyways, I don't do that. I do a cannonball and jump right in. I'm that kid. Can I get an amen? Hopefully you said amen or this just became like super awkward for me. So anyways, but that is okay. I am just excited to start week number two of our Proverbs series. So if you have your notes, make sure you grab them and let's do a cannonball and jump in. All right, so last week, we touched on how Proverbs is a book in the Bible. Has anybody read it? It is so good. I find that it is the book of wisdom. And it was written by none other than Solomon, who was very, very, very wise. I picture him with like a long white beard, you know, for wisdom. For me personally, if I'm facing like a tough situation, if I don't know what to do, or if I'm just like, kind of needing wisdom in a situation I'm in, I go straight to the book of Proverbs because usually the answer's in there, which yes, is where we find our series verse, which is found in Proverbs chapter three, verse 13. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. So if I'm reading this correctly, we are trying to gain understanding and find wisdom and the Lord just continues to make us more joyful. And if we're being honest, learning is pretty fun. So this actually reminds me of my favorite verse in Proverbs. It's found in the exact same chapter, Proverbs chapter three. And yes, today it is our memory verse. And I'm sure you've heard this one before, but if not, be sure to write it down. And even if you have, it's important, so you should write it down. Our memory verse for today is Proverbs chapter three, verse five and verse six. It says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now pause, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's so good. I like to sometimes emphasize words to show that they're important, so ready? See if you catch it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight this is such a good verse but i want to make sure that we go back to those two words we need to like highlight them circle them put underlines under them i don't know do you put a star next to it do you write like that's good i don't know what you do but we need to make sure that we focus on these two important words, okay? The first one, I don't know if you caught it, but I was using emphasis, okay? But it was trust. We need to trust, okay? Trust in the Lord with all, that's the second one, okay? All your heart. 
All right, so I need you to find those two words. I need you to circle them, underline them, highlight them, do whatever you need to do to remember those words. They're so important. And actually, these two words are also found in our big answer today. For today, we are learning that I choose to trust in all things. I find that when we say choose, you also have a choice not to trust. So I can choose to trust in all things or I can trust to not, right? I cannot trust, okay? But we wanna choose to trust God in all things. All right, you know there is a man in the Bible who not only chose to trust God with all of his heart, I'm telling you all his heart, but he also helped save your favorite animal. Yep. That's right, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Noah. And I could tell you this story myself, I'm not much of a storyteller, but why have me tell it when we can watch this epic story? Check it out. What do you mean we don't have an epic story? I just took, what, what do even Mr. Gabe and that other guy do? I just, uh, anyways, okay, all right, well, <laughs> Anyways, I guess I'll tell you the story. Uh, so we don't have an epic story for today, but the story of Noah is pretty epic in itself. The story can be found in Genesis chapter six through chapter nine. Let me break it down for you. God created Adam and Eve and everything was perfect until they started disobeying God. And then all of a sudden sin entered the world and eventually God saw everyone sinning and he wasn't really happy with them. So he decided to do something. He decided to wipe everyone out. Wipe everyone out. Like for real, this is in your Bible. Genesis chapter six, verse seven and eight says, so the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth, the human race I have created. And with them, the animals, the birds, the creatures, the June bug, no, I'm just kidding, that's not in there, but it should be. The move, that move along from the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So God actually liked Noah and Noah found favor in God's eyes and decided to spare Noah and his family. So God, goes and commands Noah to build an ark or like a very, very large boat. And he says uh, he's gonna bring two of every animal, two of every bird, two of every reptile, two of every insect, except June bugs, come on now. And he brought two of every single creature to fill the ark. When Noah finished the ark, his family and all the animals quickly got inside and it started to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine? What would you do for 40 days and 40 nights if it rained all the time? I can't believe it. I just, uh. Anyways, Noah and his family, all these animals too, they were in the boat for over a year. Can you imagine how bad that ark must have smelt? I'm just saying, like, yikes, a year of animals in there. I'm, I'm just saying. But eventually the water dried up. They released the animals and God promised never to flood the whole earth again by sending a rainbow to mark his promise. So when you see a rainbow, just remember, that's God's promise to us. He's never gonna flood the earth again. Okay, so this story is like super cool, but I actually have a fun little Bible fact. Did you know how old Noah was when he died? Anyone? The Bible says that he lived to be 950 years old. Like what? You don't get that old or survive on a boat for a year with your family and a lot of animals without learning a few things about trusting God in all situations. So there are two things that I wanna pull from this story. Number one, trusting God is a daily choice. Okay, trust is dependency. I have to depend on God to come through. It is not something you do like once and then move on. It's actually an intentional choice to exercise trust daily. That means every day. Did you know that you actually trust things daily without even thinking about it? Don't believe me? All right, I've got you. You trust that a cup will hold whatever you put in it. Ooh, that's lemon juice. You trusted that the chair you sat in today was gonna hold you up. Just saying, if you take the bus, you trust that your school bus is going to drive you to 
school. You trust that the sun will come up during the day. You trust that the moon will come up at night. You trust a dog to be your best friend and you trust a cat to ignore you. You trust vanilla ice cream to be the worst flavor ever. And last but not least, you trust that when you flip the light switch off, that the lights will actually turn off. Ah! We trust a lot without even knowing it. It is like our bodies. Now my body wants to grow big and strong. Mission accomplished. I'm just kidding. But anyways, in order for my body to be big, maybe even taller and strong, I have to intentionally choose to eat healthy. So my body is trusting, or let's say it's dependent, that I will make the right decision and choose to eat, I don't know, like healthy veggies over candy and junk food. Hmm, not bad. Perfect, well now that I ate a veggie, I don't have to eat any for the rest of the week. Ah, wrong answer. My body chooses to trust daily that I will eat vegetables and have a well-balanced diet. Only trusted God for three days. I'm telling you, that ark would not have been finished. And we would not have any animals. And wait, we wouldn't be alive. Oh my goodness, wow. But thankfully, Noah was super intentional. He had wisdom and applied what he knew and put it into action. He was choosing to trust God daily. And that is exactly what we have to do. He followed our memory verse like we read earlier in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight it doesn't say to trust god three times it doesn't say to trust god sometimes no it says in every situation or in all ways trust in him and he will make your path straight even when there were no clouds in the sky noah chose to trust god even when he was tired and he was weak, he still chose to trust God. And even when people mocked him, made fun of him, maybe they threw mud at him, I don't know, he, he still chose to trust or depend on God. So in every situation, in all ways, right? In all your ways, with all your heart, trust God. But why? And that's actually number two for today is why do we trust? Let's take it back to our example earlier of trusting the chair or your cup or, you know, the light switch. Why is it so easy for us to put our trust in a light switch or a cup or a chair? It's because we have experience with it. Over time, we've sat in maybe a thousand different chairs and turned off, I don't know, a thousand different lights and drank hopefully more than a thousand cups of water. And each time the chair or the light or whatever it was came through, it held you up. The lights turned off every time you turn them off. So now you've learned to depend on that chair, on that light, on the cup, because you've spent time with it and you've experienced it. The more time you spent on that chair, the easier it was to trust it. So why was it so easy for Noah to trust or depend on God with all of his heart? Remember, he trusted with all his heart. He didn't look at his situation. He trusted with all his heart. It's because he spent time with God. He had experience or a past with him. God came through before, so he knew that God would come through again. So even when there were no clouds in the sky, and even when people mocked him or made fun of him, he knew with all of his heart, that if he put his trust in God, God would make his path straight and God would come through. Think about the story of David and Goliath. I know we just changed gears, but think about it. Why did David trust God when he was facing Goliath? Because he spent time with him. God came through for David when he faced the lion and, and, and even when he faced the bear. So when David stood in front of Goliath, it was like the same thing. He trusted that God was going to come through again, just like he did before. See, if we want to do big things like Noah or like David or even like Jesus, we have to choose to trust 
daily. And as we trust daily, we gain experience with God because we're spending time with him. We're getting to know him. And as we do that, it gets easier to truly trust and depend on God in all situations. So why do we trust God? Because God always comes through. He is faithful. In my Bible, I can open it up and I can see so many people that trusted God with all of their hearts and God came through for them. And if he came through for them, he's going to come through for me. As we come to a close this week, I want to challenge you in your life. I want you to find a situation that's either big or small. And and I want you to practice trusting in God with all your heart. The more times you trust and depend on God, the easier it will be the next time you face a situation. And with that, I'm afraid our time together has come to a close. I had a blast hanging out with you today, and uh, I'm going to go finish the rest of my vegetables, and who knows, maybe it'll make me taller, you know? But until next time, I'll see you guys.